Hey everybody, my name is Wendy, welcome. I'm excited that you're here today. I am going to be showing a card that is inspired by my Aunt Lori. Now, this entire month of April, I'm doing a fun thing where I'm celebrating the women in my life, be it people who have changed my life, affected my life, impacted me in some way, we are going to celebrate them. And I'm excited that you're here to see what kind of card I've made for her. And I'll share a little bit about her and how she has uh, personally affected me and, and impacted my life. Um, if you want any of the products that I'm going to show today, you can click the link in the description below the video to go to my blog post where all everything's laid out for you. Or you can actually click on the supplies in the link in the description and it will take you directly to purchase those items. I always appreciate it when you shop with me because that helps pay all my bills and it helps me continue to be able to do awesome YouTube videos for you. So let's go to my stamp table and let's make a card for Aunt Lori and I'll tell you a little bit about her. Hey there, okay, we are going to use the Let It Ride stamp set and we are gonna do some watercoloring. I'm really excited about today's card because I've not done a lot of watercoloring uh, in the last, I don't know, six months or so. So I've been trying to do a little bit more of it. And I also had you guys request to do more of my complicated cards again that I had gotten too easy. So um, I gotta tell you, honestly, I started doing more easy stuff because I felt like the harder stuff was maybe too much for people. And so that's kind of where that started. But anyway, um, I've got soft suede, early espresso, crumb cake, coastal cabana, and granny apple green uh, inks here. And you saw that I squeezed them all together and then I um, opened them up and I'm going to use the ink from the palette of the ink pad. So a few weeks back I did a watercolor project with the re-ink, re-inkers or ink refills from Stampin' Up. And this is essentially the same process. But instead of using an ink refill, you're just squeezing the ink into the palette of the ink pad and using it there. I have my Stamparatus tool and I've arranged my horses how I want them on my water watercolor cardstock. And I'm stamping multiple times with stays on ink because this uh, watercolor cardstock is very toothy, which means it's got a lot of texture. And to get the ink stamped well and down in all the little crevices, you have to do it multiple times. And the only way to do that is with a stamping tool like the Stamparatus. So now I wanna draw in some hills. So I want to give the illusion that the horses at the top are far off in the distance and the horse in the front is coming towards you. And so that's why you can use both of these um, images on the same card. This is a pigment pen. It is waterproof. And so I'm just drawing in some of the hills and the lines, just kind of sketchy lines. I'm not stressing very much over perfection or anything like that. I'm just going for it. And um, that will give me a place to work my color from. So anytime an image is larger, it gives the illusion that the that the larger image is in the forefront and the smaller images are in the foreground. So that is what we've done here. We've created a, a space where it looks as though this one horse is running off into the wild and those other two are grazing up on the hillside. We're going to start with coloring this horse. I want to add some shadows in the areas where Stampin' Up! has already added them with the stamp set. So anywhere that you see lines basically is kind of like saying here this area should be darker. So that's what I'm working on and I'm using silver brushes. This watercolor paper is Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper and I am linking to everything I've used here today in the description below the video. So if you have any questions about um, the products I'm using, you can get them in the description. Also, um, if you click on anything that's like an Amazon link, I am an affiliate of Amazon, so I do get a little um, kickback from that, but it doesn't cost any extra money for you. Right here, I'm making a little star on this horse's 
uh, forehead because a lot of horses have like little white stars or stripes on their face and I thought it would just give a little bit more interest to this horse instead of making it all flat one color. My goal for this horse was to kind of give the illusion of this horse being bay in color, B-A-Y. A bay colored horse has black legs, black nose, black tips on their ears, and their overall color is kind of like a warm brown color, a little bit red, and I did not do a great job. <laughs> I didn't do a great job. I should have had a watercolor black ink to add the black to the legs, but I didn't have any and I wasn't going to redo anything or start over, so I just made it work. I'm going over everything with crumb cake ink to kind of tone down that early espresso and all in all, I enjoy how this horse came together. It did take a little bit of finagling to get things the way I wanted them to. Um, and I had to come back to it later. But ultimately, I got the results I wanted. Then I'm adding crumb cake to both of these horses, except this horse in the back, I am making a paint horse. Paint horses have white spots on them. Um, and so I'm leaving some white spots on that horse and they aren't really the focal point. So I'm not spending very much time, uh, coloring them. Okay. So today's card is dedicated to Aunt Lori and I'm going to be mailing her this and she is a huge horse lover. And when I was a kid, um, I can remember it like it was yesterday cause it was huge, a huge thing for me. Um, my Aunt Lori and her husband, one year for Christmas, gave me an entire year of riding lessons. So every, I think it was like every Thursday, my Aunt Lori would pick me up from school and we would go to riding lessons in Sacramento. And the horse that I rode's named, name was Fishlips. And he was a sorrel horse, sorrel quarter horse, and he was beautiful and I loved him dearly. He was such a good horse and so awesome to ride and just easy. Um, I have no natural talent for riding, none. I'm not good at it. It's not my cup of tea, but I wanted it to be really, really bad. And the other thing is I was always a little afraid of horses, which Honestly, most people should be because they're powerful and they're strong and they have a little tiny brain. And so um, they can, if they are not treated right um, or dealt with correctly, they can be very dangerous. And so anyway, I would go with Aunt Lori to these riding lessons and on the way we would stop um, and have McDonald's. Please don't judge. This was people, this was in the 90s when it was still okay to have McDonald's, okay? So we would stop and we would have McDonald's and we would do this thing with the French fries where we would pick up each French fry and we would test it and we would push it down on the countertop. And if the French fry like folded and buckled, we didn't eat it. But if it was like crunchy and crisp and strong, we ate it and we called them um, the other fries, wimpy fries. And real quick on this card, I am randomly going around and adding the Coastal Cabana. I want this to look like clouds. I don't want it to be this even sky. I wanted it to be very loose and very open. And so that is why you can see here that that it's like that. I wanted it that way. I'm going back in where the hills are and I'm adding some depth by adding, adding another layer of ink and letting it just kind of move about. But I wanted it to be darker right up at the top and fade in a little bit as the hills tuck behind each other. Now, ultimately, this is incorrect. <laughs> I actually should have done the opposite. It should be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top because the sun would hit the top and the shadows would be, so like where my bottom line is, I should have it dark behind that hill because that's where there would be shadowing. I did it incorrectly. I don't care. It's not a big deal. It's a card. It is a card. So we're going to trim off a quarter of an inch 
on each side to make this a little bit smaller or an eighth of an inch here, eighth of an inch there, and then a quarter of an inch. And so anyway, back to what I was saying is we would test all of our french fries. My favorite thing to get was a quarter pounder with cheese. That is what she got as well. And I'm pretty sure I got it because she got it because I thought anything she did was like the coolest thing in the world. So that's the other thing about Aunt Lori is that she um, was, she's only 14 years older than me. So she, I always kind of looked at her like an older sister or somebody you would just really look up to. I, I was like five, she was 19, right? So you know that dynamic where there's like a little kid and they look up to the bigger kid like, oh my God, you're the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. So we had that kind of a relationship. I just idolized her. One of the things I did not show you is that I stamped those trees that are also in the Let It Ride stamp set and it really pulled the card all the way together. Um, I'm actually right now heat embossing the sentiment that I just stamped. So anyway, that was my time with Aunt Lori. We, there were lots I would stay the night at her house and hang out with her and I just adored her. I just loved her. So in my adult life, um, we've had our differences. We've, you know, had times where we haven't talked or things haven't been copacetic for one reason or another, but, um, ultimately she has always been, and now everything's good, but ultimately she's always been an awesome role model of what it is to be a parent. Um, I've always really, really admired her parental capabilities. She is such a good mom. She has two daughters and they are both really good kids and she's raised them really, really well. And like seriously cannot say enough about what a good job she has done as a parent. Is she perfect? No, nobody is. But I mean, I just, I, she's somebody that I actually mimic um, her behavior as a parent and how dedicated she is to her kids. That's always my goal is to be that dedicated. And one of the best things she does is she keeps her kids really busy, which means they stay out of trouble. And so that's something I have emulated. I keep my kid really busy to keep her out of trouble. <laughs> so, you know, idle hands and whatnot. All right, so we're gonna add this sentiment and it'll probably pretty much wrap up this card. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this week of hearing the stories about my aunt and my mom. Um, they all have something really awesome to bring to the table and have all impacted me one way or another. Most of the time good, sometimes bad, because um, that's life, right? I mean, if we interact with people and we don't live in a, under a rock, then there's going to be good and bad experiences. But uh, honestly, most of the time you can learn more from the bad than you can the good. So um, I've learned from each one of these women how to do certain things or live certain ways that will improve and enhance my life. And then there's been a few things where I'm like, mm, don't want to do that. <laughs> like there is with anybody, right? I mean, so um, anyway, this is Aunt Lori's card. If you want to see the other videos from me, you can click either one that you see here. Click on the circle with my face in it to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com. And I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you again next week. Uh, also, don't forget, you can also order that awesome storage stuff right now from Stampin' Up! as well. Thanks so much. Bye.